this is Anne Maria of the Art of Healing, and today I want to present to you my dear friend Linda Hack. She uh, has been very uh, essential, I guess, in my growth and my education as a light worker and as a light language channeler. So um, it is my deepest, deepest joy and pleasure to introduce to you Linda. All right, so here is my dear friend Linda. Welcome, Linda. Hello, Amory. How are you? <laughs> Good. All right, so welcome to the Get Up and Go show. And this show was kind of downloaded into me by spirit because we're in such tumultuous times and we are you know even those of us who are in touch with spirit and um you know just walk daily with spirit we we, we still run across difficulties and we still run across the need to reconnect with our joy yes I and agree. So that's like the first reason for the show. The second reason for the show is really to just for me to connect with people who have been, um, who have influenced me in my spiritual journey, which I, you know, I'm just so honored to, to know you. Uh, so the first thing I'd like you to do, please, is to tell me about yourself or to tell the viewers about yourself and, um, just give us an introduction as to who you are. Okay. Well, uh, first off, I am a mommy. Mm -hmm. Second off, I'm a wife. Okay. I have two generations of grandchildren, grandchildren and great grandchildren. I've been extremely blessed. And with all of these children, I have eight, a number nine grandchild on his way right now. Wow, fantastic. I know. And I have um, four, five great grandchildren, all boys. And um, we have been so blessed because all of them have gone healthy. All of them have remained healthy and safe throughout their lifetime so far. So we are just really, really blessed about that. Um, I thank God every single day, every single day for that blessing that nothing has touched our family in a devastating way. Um, like so many of my friends, colleagues, and um, personal followers have had to go through in this lifetime. Wow. And it's not to say that someday that's not happening for us, but as of today, we are blessed to know that nothing has happened. Um, I'm also a, after many, many years, I was in my 60s, um, when I finally awoke and was blessed with the ability to channel. And it started out on a one-on-one -on -one channel, um, and then it's just grown. And now I'm, uh, I'm blessed to be the vessel for not only um, channeling and helping other people through difficult times in their life, but also to channel light language that has an extremely powerful, powerful um, element to hit. It, it heals um, body, uh, body, mind, and soul. Um, you can set your intention to receive when you hear light language. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, as, as your, your friends here are going to be hearing and watching, um, hang on, somebody wants to update. Not now. And um, if they are listening to anybody speaking the light language, um, I, would, I would encourage them to set their own intention. Like if you're on Facebook and all of a sudden somebody puts up a post and, 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 and I do this a lot and share light language you can go back to listen to it and then you can go back to it and when you go back to it you can actually set your own tension to what you would like that light language oh. to do for you see People i don't realize know that. that yeah i didn't even know that that's beautiful it's universal it's absolutely positively universal and extremely powerful um the only thing that i would caution is if you came into this life with a particular contract for certain specific let's just call them ailments, conditions, whatever you want to call them, like mm -hmm. mine is arthritis wow. of my hands. And um, although I am mostly not in pain, it still, you know, is causing deformities and stuff like that. 
Um, but I learned in a QHHT that I came in with that contract that this is a constant reminder of just how powerful I am despite something that could hold me back if I chose to let it hold me back. So th this, this is my reminder of, of, of just how powerful I am that, that I'm here to do. I have a message to deliver. I'm here to uh, help awaken other people and there is nothing that is going to stop me from doing it. So uh, you just, you just like, I'm going to start to cry. And I, just, I, I don't know why, no tears, no but tears. you just, no. you just hit me with something because I'm going through my own situation Someone? like that. Uh, and it's, it, it's another way of looking at the ailment, you know, it's another way of looking, oh my gosh, Linda, you had to do this, man. Ah, and you didn't even know it. And also, I wanted to say I'm I'm seeing orbs flying around, and I love it. I, I'm just it's just so beautiful. You're seeing my orbs in my room. I saw one. I well, I'm I'm seeing one behind my computer. So Aww. that's even better because I've seen orbs. You know, you can see orbs through cameras because yeah. they they let in different spectrums of light than the human eye. And I guess that's an upgrade for me if I can start seeing, seeing them it? just with my natural eye. Oh, I gotta <laughs> tell you then, because you, you're leading right into this. We're like leading each other. Like you said, when we started, Spirit's gonna lead this thing. So yeah. you're leading me right into a story the other night. It was the night before last, I went to bed and I don't normally dream that often, but um, I did and in this particular dream, um, which was absolutely amazing, I could see Clearly, with my eyes, I could see the orbs. I can see. The, I could see the auras of of people, which is not something that I consciously wow. do now. It's not a conscious thing that I do now. But in this dream, I could do that. And then, when I when I and it was just so cool. And I was playing with it in my dream. I was playing with it. I, oh, I was that's holding awesome. orbs in my hands and bouncing. Oh, that's awesome. Around. I know. Oh, I just but saw one behind my head. Here. <laughs> then I woke up and the most amazing thing was is that I woke up and I looked up and I, I have a fan above my bed in there and there was this beautiful purple orb around oh. each of the paddles of the fan wow. okay and then I happened to look away from there and I have this funny the all these ceilings are weird looking anyway I, then I could see that it was like liquid my ceiling was like liquid and it was moving and this was my conscious mind. So it was like, almost like a confirmation that, yes, this really is a movie that we're in. Oh, I believe it. That, that yeah, we're, we're in a matrix. We're in a dream. Yeah. You know, we're exactly. totally in a dream. We think that we're awake right now, you and I talking over this contraption, right? Um, but yeah, we're not, right? It's so fascinating. It's so fascinating. Now, I wanted to ask you, um, I noticed on the email that you sent me, it said Arts by Linda Lee. Are you an artist also? I'm not the kind of artist that you are. Okay. Because <laughs> you are just a fabulous, fabulous artist of color and texture and all those beautiful things. I, um, um, I was, uh, right after 2001, 9-11. Uh, in fact, I have a book out called Channeling 9-11, um, 2001. Oh, wow. And what happened to me was I had never drawn anything in my entire life. In fact, um, I always revert back to this little story where I was trying to make um, pin the nose on Fred Flintstone for my, for my son's birthday. I think it was his fourth or fifth birthday. And he's the youngest of my three children. He has two older sisters. And I am trying to, to make this and my girls pushed me out of the way and said, look, mom, let us do this. Right. Because that's how bad my drawing was. Well, after the events of 9-11, I was, evidently I was just shaken to, to the core. And what happened is I was sitting in my living room and I had um, some paper laying on a, on a table. There's a heck of a lot more to this story, but I'll make it brief. And I was being compelled to pick up this paper and pencil. And I didn't know why. I think what I had been doing earlier is searching on the internet for flags because a certain color of a flag kept, kept coming up 
in the news or somewhere that made me go looking for this flag colors. And so that paper, I had printed out some of them, that paper is what was laying on the, laying in front of me, excuse me, with, with, a pen, with a pencil laying there. Anyway, it overcame me and in my mind, I'm going, why do I want to pick that up? I don't want to write anything. But it, it was just so compelling that eventually I picked it up. And when I did pick it up, I started drawing. Yeah, wow. And I now have a collection of like 350 pictures that I drew over from September 11th to the middle of March of the following year. And a lot of those pictures are in the book. A lot of the pictures are in the book. And I do believe that uh, they were being channeled to me. And this, I think this was probably just the beginning of things for me. And I didn't really realize what was going on. A lot of people that I had talked to said, oh, well, it's not unusual for people that have gone through the traumatic shock of what that brought to all of us um, that uh, began to draw to help take away all of that. Mm -hmm. But then I had a girl that lived down the street and I said to her, I began to get very concerned about where this drawing was coming from. And she was a psychic. So she said, well, bring me the very first picture you drew and the very last picture you've drawn. And she said, don't show them to me, just bring them in the house and lay them down on the table. And she put her hand on both of them. And she says, I'm gonna suggest that you go three months and don't draw anything and then try to draw something. And I did what she said and I couldn't draw anything. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know if I did myself a favor or not. <laughs> and I tried to go back to the drawings again and I still don't get anything. So I don't That's know what it was all about. Make sure, uh, is it like a published book? To, is it a yeah. published? It is. Okay, yeah, so make sure you give me the link so I can add it to, you know, the description yeah. of the video. Uh, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Oh, my, it is? Yeah. Is it, in your, is it through your website? It, it's... Yes, it's also on my website. All right, well, fine then. Oh, that's fascinating. I never knew that. Yeah, they can order the book from my website, and I have them here, and I just mail them directly or they can go through Amazon and have them ordered from there. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about ordering a directly from me is I get to sign them. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I'll just have to do that, you know. Yeah, I get of course, to sign I'll have to do that. Okay, so past is past. As much as I'd love to talk more about that, um, I'm going to put it aside because yeah. now we have to really, really, in a very conscious way, redirect our creative minds and we co-create our world every moment. So I would love you to talk to me about things that you do in your life that just bring you back to home, bring you back to heart, bring you back to love. <laughs> well, the thing that does that the most for me, number one is my family. Mm -hmm. Okay, which during these trying times, we all know it's been very, very difficult to stay connected to our children, our grandchildren, our loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not holding in space with, with your family members, which you're fortunate enough to do, I believe you have your sons and your mom with you. Mm -hmm. So how glorious is that, right? And um, uh, being able to... See, it's, it's blessing for us. They bring me the most joy. Secondly, what brings me the most joy is doing the work that I do, being a channeler and helping other people, um, doing my light language and sharing it with others brings me my absolute joy. Also right now I'm co-authoring a book that my husband is writing and um, this hopefully will be published sometime by the end of the year and hopefully hit the market. And it's called The World of Psychics, Mediums, and Chandlers, or our spirits, I mean. And it's a look inside from the outside. So this is, um, this is what we've been doing and working on to keep us busy during this shutdown. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? Yes. Um, I don't have any art projects going on, per se, you know, that kind of things. So we lived... Um, David was ill before this shutdown even began, so we have really been in isolation much longer than anybody's been in isolation because yeah. when, he, when he got out of the hospital, I wouldn't let the family come because the families are out and I, I, his immune system was so low yeah. that I was very fearful. 
we managed to have one meeting with the family before they shut everything down. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing this for quite a while, but it's pretty much our lifestyle now. David um, has some physical things that prevents him from, from us doing any extensive traveling or any of that kind of stuff. So we're here to support one another and love one another and be each other's friends. And um, we have our sweet little pooch. She's somewhere around. I think she's yeah. in the office. We have our, our sweet little Lucy. Um, I spend way too much time on Facebook. Um, I spend way too much time um, uh, trying to find out what's going on in the world. You know what I mean? And I have to remind myself that, and I, and I want everybody to remind themselves that we chose this lifetime, number one. We chose to be here at this time, 2020. Mm -hmm. We chose to mature into and to awaken within ourselves for this particular time. And what I say is so, so important is that we all share this light and we allow our light to shine because this right now, these things that we are going through and the things that are still before us um, is why we have chosen to be here and why we have chosen to be the lighthouse um, and why we have been chosen to be the beacon to awaken other people and to bring them into their own. It's not all about, it goes beyond psychic abilities. It really goes beyond psychic abilities. It goes into the light that you are, the light that you walk, the yes. light that you are. And it's that light. I mean, you can go into the supermarket and stand next to somebody and the light, the energy of your light is being absorbed by them. And you don't even know whether or not you've just awakened that person. Mm -hmm. And also in, in one of my meditations that I did early on, and I'm like, really, exactly, what am I doing? You know, because when I first started sharing my light language, there were very few people out there that didn't knew anything. There was... Um, how long have you been doing that, by the way? Well, I've been speaking light language since I was 12, only then it was speaking in tongues. Right, right, okay. Yeah, and uh, soul language, light language, uh, language of light, um, those are just modern terms for speaking in tongues. Yeah, I, I recall, uh, I've only been speaking light language for, what is it, a year and a half, maybe two years, and light language to almost two years and i think you and like maybe one other person is what i found mm -hmm. at that time i think now oh uh, wow. the community it's exploded. Has, has exploded yeah and it's what it's meant to do that's exactly yeah. what it's meant to do jamie price is the only one that i could find doing it when i first started to share my light language and but before i even shared it for the very first time um, now, you guys remember, I, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues when I was 12 years old. I didn't share it with another person until five years ago. Wow. It was just mine. And Not was, even your kids, not even your husband, nothing. Wow, wow, wow. Because the word speaking, and that was before I, I um, related. My kids, my kids are worried they're going to have to commit me someday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And that's pretty normal. But um, Good. <laughs> as a matter of fact, the crazier you think you are, the more awakened you truly are. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yes. I have a girlfriend. I always here. say it's a good thing that I'm crazy because if I wasn't, I'd really be crazy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, if this isn't, if this, if what I'm experiencing isn't real, then oh my God, I must really, you know, either way I need help. I need somebody to tell me it's real or I need somebody to tell me, you need help. It goes either way. Well, I, I, I experienced like the darkest of the dark and, and this is, is wonderful. No, the light language, I, I'm gobsmacked by it. You know, it's like, what the heck? And I'm just amused by it because uh, it's not just the language that comes through. My body shakes and jiggles and wiggles, and and uh, it's just it's hilarious. I just giggle throughout the whole thing, and that's that's the true test. If it is, you know, if you're experiencing joy, if you're experiencing bliss, if you're experiencing, 
you know, uh, you know, this kind of, of happiness, then you know it's divine. You know it's from the light. You know it is what you should be doing. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, and I haven't I haven't really spoken to anybody that that really feels like it's coming from a dark place. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't experienced that with anybody, you know, telling me that they, but I've had people tell me that they feared that it was from a dark place. And yeah. right, they're the like, whoa, what is wrong with me? Where is this coming from? You know, they, like some people will begin speaking it in, in during a meditation or something. And then they think they've connected with something that's, that's dark. And that's why it's so important for us to allow people. And, and um, that's why I, could, I created my page called the, um, uh, light language by Linda Lee's group so that people can go in and they can experience other people's light language. They can have a conversation in there about it. They can, you know, um, do all of those things. And it's important that people realize that this is coming from a, a place of light. Absolutely. And as, as a personal prayer, um, as a personal prayer, this is your direct connection to the divine or your higher self. I found that a lot of this is coming from the higher selves. When I do one of my sessions, that's exactly what happens. I channel their higher self for them, mm -hmm. for, for them to receive a message from their higher self that they have reached a point on their path to receive. And it comes from, and I'm always told where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told, oftentimes I'm even told the name that that soul went by from that lifetime that is now channeling to them. And the fact that we cannot pick it apart with our mind mm -hmm. is why we don't understand what we're saying. Yeah. You had said something um, back in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale. And for those of you who don't know, Linda had put on a weekend, um, what was it called, the light language? Power and purpose of light language. That's right. And that's um, when I first met Linda in person. Um, and you had said something about how when our words don't know how to pray, mm -hmm. the light language is the prayer. Absolutely. And that floored me. It floored. I was like, wow, what a beautiful way to think of what this is. Because yeah. I can remember when I first started channeling, like I'd be crying and channeling light language. And in my ego mind, I'm like, wait a minute, if I'm crying or if I'm a little tipsy or, it, you know, <laughs> it, how is this still coming through? So if I'm praying and crying and it's the light language, then it's my soul expressing what my human language can't. Exactly. <sighs> That's a good way. It's a very good way to put it. A very good way to put it. And that's how I used it. I used it. Um, okay. You could, uh, I was 12 years old. Okay. So I spent my 400 years at home and never touched on it. Never spoke it. Didn't do anything with it. And it, for, for those that really want to read the story, it's on my website, just about me. And um, uh, there's a tab in my website that says it's about me. And then there's a blog tab too. You can go in there and find out more about it, the story behind me. But um, I, I would use it when I was in strife. I would use it when I was um, confused. I, was use, I would use it to pray when I didn't know what to pray for. I just knew that I was in pain and I, I didn't have the words. I mean, and most people, when they're going through pain, you say, oh my God, please, I can't take any more of this. Please help me, please help me, please help me. Well, that's not enough, mm -hmm. right? So with the light language, you have your direct divine connection to that which you need. And our minds will tell us what we need, but that might not be what we need at all. Mm. Wow. Because we're experiencing, we're in strife because we've asked to have an experience in which we can learn from. And if we try to pray that, experience away without learning what it is that we chose to experience here what have we accomplished as far as our growth goes mm -hmm. you know so that's where i think the light language helps on a personal level with people and i also feel that <clears throat> yes i can activate people with my light language 
but yes, you can too. Emily, you can put up one of your beautiful videos of you singing and doing your light language and bringing joy to another. And that person may listen to it and a week down the road may begin speaking light language. We can activate each other. I don't hold a corner on activating people in light language, trust me. Because it's like a pyramid. We start here with one person and the whole universe is going to be covered and people who can speak tongue. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of it. I think that's where we hear so much about the 144,000 light workers. Okay, it's the point that we have to spread the ability or awaken the ability in, in others so that we can span the globe and not just keep it at home. And having the internet has allowed us to do that. I have people, in, and so do you, I'm sure we have people that we stay in contact through via Facebook video or and or Zoom or whatever that are all over the globe from all different countries. And it's amazing, but it gives us the freedom to awaken others with that which we came here to do. Right. Oh, that's just so beautiful. So beautiful. Is there anything uh, that you feel motivated to share? Do you want to channel? It's all up to you. I'm not putting any pressure on you whatsoever. Well, first of all, we're going to get back to our mugs. Where's yours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our mugs. Okay. Woo -woo. Okay. Go ahead. Tell us about your mug. Well, I went to the UK and I did a one week retreat with wonderful light workers where there was like 20 of us and we all there, all with different abilities and we all shared our abilities with one another. One of the things that I did was activate everybody. Okay. Um, we did repairing DNA, activation, light language. One of the girls, um, one of the girls that was there, okay, and she's on uh, Facebook. She's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Nina Peru is her name. I'm sure I'm pronouncing her, her, her last name wrong. Anyway, she brought this cup and she gave this cup to me. So, oh, that's when, sweet. When I do have my cup of coffee in the morning, which I don't do every day, but I'm always searching. This is my cup. This is what I have my coffee in. The rest of the day, I drink water, so it has water in it. Yeah. Um, so that's where my cup came from. Where did yours come from? Yeah, mine was purchased. This uh, this is uh, by an artist, Kay Jeffers. Um, she's a local potter, and I found her um, beautiful display at a, a psychic fair I went to, or something, you know. And they had all these vendors and everything, and uh, I just adored it. I just I like it. it. I like the colors. So pretty. And this is like a lace um, pressed into it. And um, I've been drinking and I'm exactly like you. I take a cup of coffee in the morning and then the rest of the day, all mm -hmm. I do is drink water yeah. and like nothing else. That's all I do. But I've read this book called The pH Miracle and it's just about the alkalinity of the body yeah. and how, you know, it, it, it's a, it's um anyway it's a it's a well, cool the body book. needs to be balanced it's yeah that 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 the body is meant to be alkaline and when it's too acidic that's when uh disease grows mm -hmm. and so anyway so one of the things i've been doing is uh which i got from this book is i put a squirt of lemon juice and then i put a pinch of baking soda ah yeah just a pinch and i went and uh in the organic section in in the, the store there's the red mill red mill farms or something it's like a like a specialty grain and um bean i don't know it's a specialty no brand. GMOs. <laughs> yeah no no gmos and yeah. i just take a pinch of that because it's not like you're putting arm and ham or baking soda yeah. into your water it's like a really fine well uh pure very pure baking soda and it just makes it so drinkable like you're just like <sighs> and it hydrates you so well so that's yeah. what i've been doing i have to do that for my husband because i have a heck of a time getting him to drink water so we have i have this other one here mm -hmm. okay this is what i keep my water and it keeps it cool mm -hmm. um, not ice cold that's another thing you shouldn't drink ice cold water Okay, so 
I keep it in here and I have one for him and it's a little more masculine. It's all blue. So I'm constantly <laughs> having to pick it up and put it in his hand to remind him to drink it. Um, he doesn't remember to drink. He never gets thirsty. I don't know how he can't get not thirsty. Yeah. Get thirsty. I find that, yeah, I find that my mom has a tough time drinking too. If she drinks something, it's only like a little half a glass. Yeah. That's what I like drink. Like, She's like, I can't drink. I don't want to drink. I can't, I'm not thirsty. Yeah. They're not thirsty. That's exactly. Yeah. And then, then he'll have a tendency to get dehydrated and then he has to go to the hospital to get hydrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, he's six foot four. He's got a lot of body to hydrate. Her uh, mom's a little love bug compared to him, you know. It was so great having her there with us. I think she had a wonderful time that weekend. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Beautiful. And the venue was unbelievable. The venue was just ah, absolutely perfect. So perfect. Beautiful. Well, my beautiful, beautiful friend, what do you feel we should end the show with? Do you oh, want to both like, do you want to both channel? Do you want to both give life language? Yes, I think that would be absolutely yeah. perfect. Fun. I've never really gotten, a lot of people do this conversation light language, but I've never gotten into that. I just don't see the need for a conversation in light language. You can speak light language and I speak light language to you back and forth as if it were a conversation. Um, I think, I think that the two girls that were in that, um, uh, Wendy and Bree, mm -hmm. did that for a couple of seconds uh, mm -hmm. that weekend. I never saw any value in that. And I've been in conversations with people well, where somebody will channel light language and then I will channel almost a response back to it. But I don't know what I'm saying. Like, it's not like, yeah, you know, and I decided to have that burger and fries. You know, it wasn't anything like that. Exactly, exactly. So I know a lot of people do do it and I've been mm -hmm. in some kind of groups that they do it. And God bless them. Hey, it can't go wrong. It can't be wrong. Right. No. I just never really got anything out of it. Mm -hmm. So we'll share. No, do you just give your blessing and then I think we'll be good. Okay, yeah. so let me ask um who wants to come in? Well, you know, um you know Eric Modus. Yeah. Yes, okay. So he's right here with me. <laughs> and um, he's saying, he's saying, I've been watching you too. <laughs> so he is here. Do you have a question for him? Well, just to say thank you because your work helped educate me on oh, me too. truth and, you know, what's out there and it confirmed so much and, you know, love love to you and thank you for everything thank you yeah uh, he says he says oh he, he's telling me to tell you i'm gonna i'm gonna tell my mom that uh-huh <laughs> uh my mom that because she's been so instr instrumental in getting the, his messages out but he would like to deliver the light language is what he's telling oh, me thank you eric thank you and and he's only done this um through me maybe once or twice and they were for recordings for his mom that he wanted her to have that were personal recordings. And after I, after she got the personal recording, um, she then gave me permission to put it out. So it's out there somewhere in, in zombie land. Um, so let's see what he has to say. Okay. I'm asking him. Okay. He's going to go with the theme. Okay. He wants to go with the theme that we have here, which is to enlighten everybody, to bring them to joy and to bring them to center within themselves and allow their light to shine during these troubling times. Thank you. Those are his words. Good. You're a poet and you didn't even know it. <laughs> okay. I say, I'm a good day. 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 I'm a good Thank you, 
lehiliando do lai ali de de hi pakati asa kaliando ku ai sei amba di pi ha sei le ho to de ama li e bu lai an da e be ke ala e yo do di ya main da hai da ali ko shi ama le e de do ki si an na ya ba he de di han da ha la ba ku pi an na ha de hi ku ko si ya amba de hi be ke pi ha amba ka le hi ki do ko se ke ti ya and he's saying um he's saying to me that we should all embrace ourselves in the love in which we are and came here to be and be gela in the belio si amalia sad di cosia and there is your refuge at kala meanda hale iti at cosia mana e lei di hasu kuti arla bataya e devi di asa kapa halo cosi hija he di bakuta hatemaka he saying connect for knowledge but do not absorb by the alaya to cosia ta those things hai kala mata that's not serving the light alele anda he le cosia te e bakosia na mia in the ambogoleata helipikusi and amakaya akaya discernment at the bg and ali hakuti hasiki hapikusi kaka knowledge alebiki hate bigi handa du kusi apaki abakalia one must always do their research alamayata kalebeka isa halebiki alebokusi ha not everybody's truth will be your truth halamayanda halebiki isi koti hamakale hikiti ke antokusi Atari de all truths are truth within the holders. Havaya kaile e biana imbiki halaba kisia na kushia behebi liata halaba kudiana imbehili liata hisaha adia adubu kusiana behebi liasa kudiana kaile bikiya to kusia abari liasa kudiya shaka ali biki dia to dia tatra bika ali biki ki anto kusia. And he's saying, always know that you are loved, you are where you are supposed to be. I have my arms around all my followers, and their loved ones. Thank you, Eric. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to He's doing the bow, he's bowing. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Oh my God. That was wonderful. Well, where, what left is there to say? Thank you, Linda. Uh, this was a, this was amazing. God oh, bless you. So thank okay. you. Thank you, Eric and all of, and thank you, creator God. Ah. <sighs> I'm just lost for words. Okay, then give us a couple words of your beautiful light language. Uh, us all right. <laughs> we can cut off a little bit from the front so you can fit it in in your hour. Oh, uh, I don't even know how long we're going. I don't even know where we are in time. We're a little over, but that's okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> And that's that. Ooh. Oh, that's so beautiful. So beautiful. It sounds so Italian. It's just beautiful. The sense that I got listening to it, in the name Marie as well, even though I know your name is Anne Marie, but the name Marie is coming to me and I see this gorgeous villa. And it's as if she's standing outside of this villa singing, singing those words like she's singing it to the masses that oh. there's a group waiting to hear her. That's what I see <laughs> during that. And uh, um, so your higher self, uh -huh. okay, is this is a, a Maria from your higher self. Okay. Um, I'm also kind of getting that that name Maria has been repeated for you in many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Marie and Maria has been reported or has been used in many of your lifetimes. Mm -hmm. But it's beautiful, it's just exciting, it's fun. 
I love it. I absolutely love it. And sweet and loving. It's just full of love. Well, this wasn't supposed to be about me. It was supposed to be about you, but that's okay. I love you. Thank you. It's about us. It's about us. us. It's about our family. Well, I'm giving you a virtual hug. Yes. Uh, Love you. Take care. And, uh, and thank you for the invitation. Let me know if you ever want me to come back. Oh, fantastic. All right, my love. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.